Hello, are you out there? I'm Mark, and this is HFT Review. We've got Gallant Fencer Fighter Subclass coming from Outrageous Maximum. Thank you so much, Outrageous, for sharing more of your content. I know this has been sitting for a month, but we've got we've got stuff queuing up on top. We're getting through it. Gallant Fencer. Combat is a dangerous craft, one which only the most adept can comfortably pursue. Every stab, slash, and smash can be the end of you. Gallant fencers understand that the best way to avoid a tragic demise is to not get hit in the first place, but are brought into the heat of battle regardless. They stand in the face of danger, yet slip the Grim Reaper's grasp as if they are playing hard to get. This class focuses on incentivizing the dodge action and giving you the ability to maintain a limited offense while focusing on defense. Note, the dodge action grants benefits until the start of your next turn. Sure, right? <laughs> so <laughs> only saying that the dodge action isn't just something that happens on your turn as, as a fighter if you take it. You can disengage, dash. Disengage affects not provoking an opportunity attack, which happens on your turn. Dashing you do on your turn. So yeah, I guess dodge carries over all the way till the start of your next turn. And what it says is... All attacks against you are at disadvantage, and you have advantage on dex saves. Jeez. Let's just check. Let's just check real quick. Oh. Bust out the handy dandy DM screen. It's got all the good information on. It. Yeah, let's just let's just double check here. Dodge. To the start of your next turn, any attack roll made against you is disadvantage. If you can see the attacker, that's worth knowing. And you make dexterity saving throws with advantage. You lose the benefit if you're incapacitated or if your speed drops to zero. Interesting. Now, that doesn't mean you used up your speed. It just means something like you're being grappled or something. Um, okay. Interesting. So this is reminding me... It, well, it's a fencer. I'm thinking like Errol Flynn in Captain Blood great old black and white pirates movie if you've never seen it see it and if you know who errol flynn is you know he was gorgeous <laughs> so he's just like you know seemingly hollywood's most heroic and gallant looking actor from uh, he also did robin hood the old school black and white robin hood one of them but he's he's the one you know of if you've ever seen the old robin hood it's errol flynn he's amazing he he reminds me of is it carrie or Carrie Yules, I believe, from The Princess Bride, the, the guy who plays Wesley, re, is is like Errol Flynn. He's reminiscent of who Errol Flynn was in terms of the look, just to give you an idea, right? So here we go. Warding Stance. When you take this subclass at third level, you are better at focusing on defense than other fighters. The dodge action can now grant additional benefits. Awesome. Already it's interesting because you could take the dodge action every turn every action you could do it here we go you gain proficiency with dexterity saving throws all day didn't you don't you already get that with that proficiency if you don't already have it okay you gain advantage okay so this one's maybe Oh, is a fighter? Do you already have... De no. Fighters get... <laughs> oh. Oh, this does work. Okay. Sorry, I was generalizing it to any class. But no, this is a fighter subclass. So, fighters have proficiency in strength in con saves. The dodge action gives you advantage on dex saves. However, warding stance gives you proficiency with dexterity saving throws which as a fighter, you're not going to have. So it's going to give you your plus two to plus six, depending on what level you are. And, and nice. I like that. Okay, your AC increases by one when you're dodging, sure. Plus the disadvantage on attack rolls, that's not bad. Plus two at 10th level and plus three at 18th level. And I think that's the standard bump ups for things like um, Battlemaster, I think gets their, extra, their, their bonus to... Superiority die at 10 and 18, so that, that tracks very nicely with other fighter subclasses. And that's significant, too, getting that extra AC. Is 
I think anyone who's played a, a quite a bit of D&D 5e, it's noted that it is hard to drive up your AC oftentimes. Like what your starting AC is in general, what your AC is going to be. But with this, it's like, no, you can progress AC provided you're taking the dodge action, which with the subclass you would do pretty much all the time you're fighting, if I had to guess. If at the start of your next, if at the start of your turn after dodging, you have not been hit by an attack. You may make a melee weapon attack, attack as a free action, meaning it doesn't count against you. This is replaced at 10th level. That's not bad. At the, if you've not been hit by an attack, any attack, so ranged attack, melee attack from the enemies, if you've dodged everything or you've been... Theoretically, you could be hiding behind a wagon <laughs> under full cover, taking the dodge action. Sure. You may make a melee weapon attack as a free action. Sure. Melee weapon not ranged. And you take that free action, and then you can make your normal action, which could be to dodge more. And so that's interesting. By taking the dodge action on your turn, you don't get to attack in general. You don't even get to make a bonus attack with an offhanded weapon. Like if you're two weapon fighting, because to do two to do that two weapon fighting, you have to take a, an attack action. So this limits how much damage you're going to do a lot, and it doesn't guarantee that you're not going to get hit doing your dodging. It just makes it a lot less likely you're going to get hit. But it is a free action, so if you get it, yeah, you might want to take it, dodge again, or you take it, make your normal attack, action surge attack again. So you could do it a bit of explosive damage that way. Yeah, okay. I like that. Offense and defense. At 7th level, you can turn the tide of a duel by maintaining your guard as you go on the offensive. You could take the dodge action as a bonus action. Oh. Uh, a number of times per long rest equal to your proficiency bonus. Okay, there's a limiter. <laughs> Sorry. As soon as I saw bonus action, my mind just started going like, so you're going to dodge as a bonus action, attack as an action? Like, holy crud. Broken. Snap. But <laughs> it's not because you are limited per long rest to your proficiency bonus. That's not bad. It essentially means you go super fighter for a handful of, of turns of combat over an entire long rest period. That's not bad. But yeah, I mean, you're essentially nearly untouchable from melee ranged attacks, and you can still attack, make your second attack, make your... Well, you won't be able to use an offhanded bonus action because you're using it up here. But still, an action surge potentially on top of it and get more attacks. So yeah, you could go nuts and be dodging. <laughs> okay. Um... Yeah, I that's very that's powerful. That's where your offense is coming in. It's a little offense there. Oh, offense there. <laughs> I'm inverted, so it's weird. Um that's where your real power is coming from though. Not not your real power, but a lot of extra offensive power based on, you know, defense with offense. But it takes to level 7 to get there. What are you doing in the meantime? Dodging a lot? Okay. At elusive stance, at 10th level, your dodging improves and grants you the following benefits. You gain the effect of evasion. Hey, what's evasion? No. Rogues get evasion. That's the... Um, because it saves on dodge? No, no, no. To two dodge things. It's... um. It's not an advantage. What am I thinking of? <laughs> Sorry, this is so long. Um, <laughs> evasion is for rogues, and it means that if you you take half damage, you take half the damage from an AOE attack, like a fireball. So normally, if a fireball comes, you make a dex save to take half damage from the fireball, or if you make the save, or if you fail the save, you take full damage. Evasion means and the reason it's roguey, is that any deck save you normally make to take damage, if you succeed, you take no damage. And if you fail, you take half damage. Oh, yeah, that's it. That's good. 
You're dodging improves and grants the following benefits. Again, so you only gain evasion if you're dodging. So whereas a rogue has evasion all the time, this is like not as powerful as evasion for a rogue because you only get it when you're dodging. But again, per the build, you're going to want to be taking the dodge action regularly. And secondly, if an enemy ends their turn within range of a melee attack, within range of your melee attack. So maybe a little clarification there because it's not any, I don't know that anyone would read it that way, but yeah, maybe they would. So if an enemy ends their turn within range of your melee attack or within your melee attack range, oh, there's that's better terminology, within your melee attack range, and that enemy didn't hit you on their turn, you may make a melee attack at that enemy. Replace to 18th level. Holy crajoli. Uh, that's not even as a reaction. I'll just see. Um, it's powerful because you don't specify it takes a reaction. It's it's just another free attack, is what you're saying. A free attack. So your warding stance is you may make a melee weapon attack as a free action, but it's not the attack option action. It's a melee weapon attack. So you don't as a fighter you can get double two attacks, three attacks. I don't think that's what you're getting there. I, I, maybe a little clarity. But this gets replaced if if you haven't been hit. The warding stance part of it gets replaced here at tenth level with this one. Meaning, anytime an enemy is ends their turn within range view and didn't hit you, you get to hit them. You get an attack on them. But if there's two or three enemies around you, if you rush into danger and you're dodging, and any one that didn't score a hit on you, you get to hit. You get to hit. You get to hit. But it's not, I, th I just think you need to be very specific that it's a single melee attack, not your second attack, your third attack. Because then it could be like attack, 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 attack. You didn't hit me, attack, attack, attack. That's a lot of damage output. Now granted, it's moderated, it's throttled by the fact that the enemies that are surrounding you, each one individually has to have not hit you. So yeah. But you could rush into a group of enemies. I think it should only be one attack. I also think j just for theme, I wonder if this should be a finesse weapon or a weapon held in one hand. Because in my mind, the way I'm seeing this, this isn't, this is just me. This is just how I see it. It is a fencer as opposed to someone wielding a halberd. Just hitting you and I'm going to hit you. It's too many attacks with like a two-handed weapon. The weapon's too heavy. It's not fast enough. So I could see a finesse or a light weapon, possibly, that, that you are designing a fencer with this. Because you, it, it, And it even adds in there that you could... If you're not using your bonus attack anymore... Well, you aren't really using a bonus attack. This one you're only using a few times a day equal to proficiency, the offense and defense part. Bonus action. Two weapon fighter with light weapons, one in each hand. Or if you get the feat for, for dual weapon fighting, you could go with light long swords in each hand. But even that still makes sense that they're light and dar darting in and out. They have re you know like a nice reach to them, thematically speaking. But you would you could have a shield potentially to really bump up that AC and then have that finesse or light weapon. I don't know. I just don't see it working with two handed weapons. And you're going to potentially start getting a lot of attacks. I mean, got in the chances to roll, roll criticals because you're potentially going to be making way more than two or three attacks per turn. Maybe, maybe not. I, I guess what I'm not really clear on here, and, and I'd want you to clarify, is are you foregoing? your second attack, your third attack as a fighter when you're taking the dodge action and not the attack action. And that these, these free melee attacks aren't full attack actions. It's not the attack action. It's a free melee attack action. 
in it that needs clarity because otherwise you could be multiplying that out three attacks on this guy three attacks and this guy three attacks and this guy because you're also not specifying here that this is a reaction anywhere i don't see the word reaction you're just getting these against people that don't hit you at the first at the third level one is if no one hits you you get one attack at the 10th level it's saying each enemy that didn't hit you you get the attack so one enemy can hit you but the, because the other one didn't you still get the free attack on that enemy and maybe a third and a fourth enemy i mean i know only so many enemies can surround you at once but you get my point okay protector at 15th level you keep an enemy engaged with you if a creature within five feet of you makes an attack against a creature other than you you can use your reaction to impose disadvantage on the attack roll right that's like uh that's one of the fighter things or paladin things protection whatever it is um but this one doesn't require a shield i don't know if the other one yeah i think the paladin one requires a shield or defender maybe it's called but yeah, that's kind of standard. I think at 15th level, that's not overly powered. But I like the fact... It, this is true with any subclass build. It does. It's not like every single thing you gain is just better and better and more and more and more power and damage. This is more of a thoughtful, defensive option to be, be a better ally to, to your comrades. It doesn't deal you any more damage whatsoever. So at 15th level, um, it's a little th thin on the benefit... But it's giving you something to do with your reaction, and the reality is, is your elusive stance at 10th level, I think, more than makes up for it. Because so, <laughs> it was really strong. Here we go. This is the capstone. Let's see what we got. Ephemeral Dance. At 18th level, you're able to retaliate with ease while on the defensive. Dodging grants a new benefit. If an enemy misses you with an attack, or uses a spell or effect that forces a saving throw, and you succeed your save... You may make a melee attack at that enemy. Holy crud. Wow. So let's compare here to the elusive stance part. If an enemy ends their turn within range of, of your melee attack and that enemy didn't hit you, on their turn, you may make a melee enemy attack. Okay, it's not a reaction. This changes now if an enemy misses you. With an attack, or use an attack spell or effect that forces a saving throw, you succeed the save, you may make a melee attack on that enemy. Oh, bo oh shoot. Oh, I see what's going on. This is subtle. Holy crud, outrageous. This is cool. This is good. Okay. Up here at the top, if an enemy makes... If the, the enemy has to not have hit you on their turn at all for you to get this attack, right? So think of creatures that have two or three attack actions. They're going to make two attacks, three attacks. If they land one of their attacks at some point, it's going to shut this down, this elusive stance thing, because it says the enemy didn't hit you on their turn. However... With Ephemeral Dance, if any time an enemy misses you with an attack, you get to poke them. So you've got the, 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 the Barbarian BBEG guy who's got three attacks with his Great Axe. Every time he swings and misses, you get to Errol Flynn out of the way, Captain Blood out of the way, and poke them. And then the big guy swings at you again with the axe. Still on their turn, you dodge out of the way, and you poke them. And then again matrix back out of the way of that great axe on the third deck still on the bad guys same turn and you get to attack them again holy crud and that's for <laughs> the next enemy tries to, to to get you with their short sword you dodge you attack them so every shot that's coming in at you as long as it doesn't hit you regardless of who it's coming from you get to counter attack counter 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 Massive damage. But but this again, though, for theme and for balance, I don't think this works with the two-handed weapon, Outrageous. Mm. Granted, it's 18th level, but holy crud. You're, if your enemies don't know your capabilities, like, which they, you know, unless they're like a kind of a really high intelligence 
uh, BBEG, they wouldn't really know what you're capable of. They should run away from you at this point. It's it's one of those rare fighter classes where it's just like, yeah, no one wants to tangle with you. They're, you're going to kill them. Every attack, every effort they make to hurt you is just going to leave their own demise faster. It's it's really cool. I don't want to say it's unbalanced, but man, it's getting strong at this point. And and then as well as a spell effect, spell or effect that forces a saving throw and you succeed. That's nice there that it's not just like any time any spell. It's like if you have to make the success. Um, any saving throw, though, doesn't specify dexterity, which I, I think is reasonable. But yeah, if you're trying to make a con save, whiz save, anything. And functionally, if they're within... No, it doesn't even... They don't even have to be within melee range of you. Well, you're not going to be able to move on your turn, though. So it would have to be melee. If an enemy misses you... With an attack or spell uh, or effect that forces a save throw from you of any kind, you and you succeed the save, you may make a melee attack at that enemy. Uh, I, I would put the word free in everywhere where these are happening. Free, free melee attack. Free melee attack action. Free melee attack action. Just so to be clear. And this happens on the enemy's turn. This doesn't mean that a wizard 30 feet away from you casts sleep. You resist it with con or whatever it is. I don't know. I don't know if you get to resist sleep. Maybe that's a bad example. I think sleep is just based off of hit points. It Maybe. I don't remember. Crap. I don't use sleep ever. But you get my point. Then it's not on your turn. You run over 30 feet and you get that free melee attack action against them. It has to be happening right there with you. So in that sense, I would say... <sighs> you get to make a melee attack. So it's not a ranged attack. So you can't throw your dagger 30 feet away. That's my point. So for this, the ephemeral dance works with a dancing partner within your melee attack range. That, that's my point. And I, I, that's come up in a couple spots. So this, I, I think it's clear what you're intending to do. I think most people that read this will understand how it's meant to work. But you've always got that rules lawyer question of like, Ooh. so I would specify through here very clearly that these, these counter free melee attack actions you're getting to take don't involve your second and third attack that you would get by taking the attack action as a fighter. I would also specify that these effects, unless stated otherwise, happen in, re in this, this, the turn of the enemy that's attacking you. Not on the next enemy's turn, in the turn order, or back when it's back on your turn again. Um, for, for, for the 10th the level version of this and the 18th level version. It needs to be happening on that enemy's turn. It's not a reaction. You're not using the word reaction anywhere, which is fine because it would be way underpowered if it was. So I get that it's not a reaction. I get that you're you're doing these little reposts again and again and again and again. But um, yeah, just a little clarity. And then again, I think ultimately, as strong as this gets, I don't think you should be able to use it with a two-handed weapon. I think this should be based off of finesse or light weapons or weapons held in one hand. In the case of, like, say, a dual, dual, dual wielder. I love it. Um, I think the flavor is massive. I've never seen anything quite like this. I've, I've honestly never seen any subclass, and I look at you know, a reasonable amount of them, where it is designed around being defensive. But, it, yeah, you're hard to hit, and using your action surge really gives you the opportunity to do some interesting things at higher levels. Um, it's great. I love it. Um, is it balanced? It's a hard one to know. I, I, you know, I don't play fighters. I, I mean, I, don't, I think a lot of us out here don't ever get at tables where people are above a level, you know, 11, 12 in that range. So it's really tough to wrap your head around what fighters can do at levels 18, 19, and 20. It's pretty monstrous. They're getting a lot of attacks. They're getting a lot of action surges. It's crazy damage output, right? Um, I think early on it's completely balanced. Yes, I just based off of what I'm seeing through level ten here up to level ten, 
and including level 10, I think it's all within the power range. Um, I just, I do wonder, uh, the protector doesn't ruin anything, but ephemeral dance, it could just be explosive. And especially depending on your wording, are you granting those extra attacks that a fighter would normally get through by taking the attack action, the true attack action, not a free melee attack action? Specify for me what the difference is. Because otherwise, by the time you get to a front ephemeral dance, if you could be getting multiple multi-attacks against each enemy's multi-attack against you that misses, and against multiple enemies, you could be attacking back, reposting, responding with 18 attacks in a in a combat round, 24 attacks in a combat round. I, I don't know. And if it if you allow a two-handed weapon because you don't say otherwise, holy crud. Explosive damage. Um it's great. It's great. I don't know if it's balanced, though. I just can't tell. Um, but yeah, whatever. Whether you take my advice or not, I think it's good. I think if you do propose this at the table to play it, go over this with your DM, as always, and maybe talk about the consequences. Or agree in advance. It's like, hey, wh how far is the module going to take us? They're like, ah, I think it'll end at eleven, you know, level 11 or 12. And you're like, okay, okay. So... If we get to 18, let's discuss some of this stuff. But yeah, clarity. I think clarity is missing. If if I, I think theme is strong. I think the fun of it, I think it sounds very fun. I think balance is, a, is questionable. I think it's definitely an A power level no matter what. I just don't know if it's like an A++ if you're overcharging. Clarity, though, I think is what's missing. I, I don't think you're hitting an A grade on the clarity. Because I have quite a few questions right now. And I think most people would. And anyone who wants to choose this to play this is going to want to squeeze as much out of the subclass as they can, understandably. But I think that could break it. If you got a player who squeezes because of the lack of clarity and a DM who doesn't push back. Okay. Awesome, outrageous. If anyone watched, thank you so much. Take care, folks.